Greetings, comrade. It's time to review... <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't do a Russian accent. But I have been looking forward to playing Metro Last Light since I saw it previewed at last year's E3. Players take on the role of Artyom, a soldier fighting for one of the factions in the Metro, the subterranean rail system that is home to survivors of a nuclear war that takes place in the future. If our team wants to survive, they'll have to take on future Nazis, mutants, and the constant risk of dying of radiation poisoning. But will Metro Last Light have you hopping on the first subway to your local game store, or will you need to down a bottle of vodka to wipe out your memories of this game? Let's find out. Metro Last Light is nothing if not an immersive experience. You've got no heads-up display, rain and blood will obscure your vision if you're wearing a gas mask, and the amount of time before your air filter goes bad is displayed on your watch. You'll even have to wipe your mask off if it got too much gunk on it, or replace it if it gets cracked. Now that's how you create a realistic experience. Metro Last Light does a great job of sucking the player in from the very beginning, and the fantastic graphics don't hurt either. The surface looks like a nuclear apocalypse painting come to life, and exploring the environment on the surface is a breathtaking experience. It's too bad hordes of angry mutants are constantly trying to stop you from taking in the scenery. The underground also has angry mutants, and everything underground is pretty grim and horrific, so the mutants trying to rip your face off fit in pretty well. I spent most of my time underground crouching in dark corners because Metro Last Light goes pretty heavy on the stealth. You can sneak through most parts of the game that take place in the Metro, and as a fan of stealth games, I found this experience fairly enjoyable. You can cut the power, sneak up on a Nazi or communist, and slit their throat before they even see you coming. One part of the stealth gameplay that I thought needed work was the throwing knife kills. Throwing knives are an instant kill no matter where you hit an enemy as long as they're unaware. And since you can recover them, you can basically kill people at a distance silently, infinitely. Which is fun for a while, but ends up feeling a little overpowered. I mean really, this giant mutant that can take a billion bullets in combat gets taken out by a knife to the knee just because it wasn't paying attention? Are these special knives designed to punish inattentive people? What kind of monster designed these things? Another annoyance with the stealth was that sometimes people didn't see you, even when they really should have been able to. Like, I know it's dark in here, guys, but I'm literally right in front of you. The weapons in the game are interesting. For example, there's a four-barrel shotgun, a pneumatic gun that you need to pump up to achieve maximum damage, and this gun that fires needles or metal rods or something. It seems to hurt people. All the guns really look like they belong in a post-apocalyptic setting, and the sound effects they produce are pretty satisfying. During certain parts of the game, you'll get this kind of, well, let's call it enhanced vision. But it doesn't really enhance anything. Sometimes your screen will get so blown out that you can't see what's going on, and other times you'll be able to see enemies behind walls, but you can't actually see the walls, so you might unload a bunch of bullets into the cover because you can't f***ing see it. And the worst part is you have no control over this particular form of enhanced vision or when it happens. But on the bright side, this happens only a few places in the game, so it's not too bad. I do enjoy the monetary system in the game as well. They have these premium bullets that can be spent on guns, grenades, or regular bullets, but you can also just load them into your gun and use them to blast enemies into oblivion with higher damage output. It's money that's actually practical. Genius. Let's talk about the enemies in the game. The Nazis and other various soldiers are well enough designed, pretty much what you'd expect from futuristic versions of World War II factions, but the real stars are the mutants. They fit the post-apocalyptic game world perfectly, and you can kind of see what each creature mutated from. There's these rat things, bear monsters, and uh, well, I, I don't really know what these demon things evolved from. Bats, maybe? I don't know, they look cool. Plus, the monsters that attack you in the subway really give the game a nice survival horror element that definitely gave me a few scares during my playthrough. Moving on to story. It starts really strong. You're after the last surviving Dark One, a species that was wiped out in the previous game and that causes delusions in most people, but Artyom is immune so he goes after the Dark One in an attempt to save it. You'll deal with issues of trust and survival in a post-apocalyptic world and end up wondering if you'd be able to survive the hellish conditions that would follow a full-on nuclear conflict. The game's plot kind of starts getting weird though toward the end of the game when ghost hands start trying to swallow people up. There's a lot of scenes in the game that just don't seem to mesh with the theme of humans trying to survive in the post-nuclear wasteland. But if you can look past the over-the-top stuff, you've got a great story with some great characters who, by the way, aren't afraid to get raunchy if the situation calls for it. 
The voice acting and dialogue in the game is pretty good and all the characters are pretty believable. However, there are a few sections where the post-production is a bit sloppy. Characters who should be getting cut off mid-sentence actually wait a beat after saying a word before getting cut off. You idiot! You're making the same mistake that... We're done here. Escort Khan out of here. I guess this happens in a lot of games, but for whatever reason, it kind of stood out to me in this one. Now one extremely frustrating part of this game was the glitches I encountered. One at the very beginning where an NPC was supposed to move and I was supposed to follow her up a ladder, but instead she just stood there like an idiot. It took me like 15 minutes of searching through the sewer looking for an exit or an event I was supposed to trip before I realized it was a glitch. Then later in the game, after defeating a mutant boss, an NPC was supposed to use a log to create a bridge for me to pass, but he totally failed and as a result I had to restart the whole chapter. A simple reload this checkpoint didn't fix the problem. I had to play the whole chapter again. So we've got an extremely rich, involved gaming experience that has a dash of survival horror, a healthy dose of FPS, and a whole bunch of stealth all rolled into one. It has a few glitches and a few gameplay mechanics that need tweaking, but overall it's one of those games that just pulls a player in so deep they lose track of time. If you're one of those people who has an end of the world survival plan and a fallout bunker full of canned food, this game's gonna appeal to you. And even if you're not obsessed with the end of the world, you're still probably going to have a great time with this one. I give Metro Last Light 8.5 Deranged Mutants out of 10. Guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.